What does it say about your country when the world's top podcaster calls it a frozen communist hellhole and the bought and paid for legacy media tell you the complete opposite? You live in the frozen communist hole in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or when the most watched journalist on American cable TV at the time routinely calls your leader a tyrant. It's funny, Trudeau always seemed like a cheerful idiot wearing weird costumes and yammering on about diversity. Who knew he was Mussolini? And the response is not to investigate the accuracy of those claims, but instead to ban that channel from being aired inside of your country outright. Or when the world's richest man says your country has no freedom of speech, which is obviously true, but then the paid off press run a story about how Elon Musk is spreading misinformation. Now, all of this is happening right now in Canada. The rest of the world is trying to tell us that something is deeply wrong inside of our country, but the legacy media working hand in hand with the government is either completely silent or instead just outright attacking and discrediting anyone who decides to speak up against Dear Leader. It's all quite astonishing really because this is exactly the type of thing that would be happening if Canada was a communist country. The rest of the world is trying to tell us that we are being led by a tyrant but the legacy media would never repeat those claims because otherwise they'd go under, they'd run out of money. Since it appears that the only people effectively criticizing the Trudeau regime are independent journalists living in Canada and journalists in the United States and elsewhere, wouldn't it be great for Justin Trudeau if he could just censor the internet and decide what gets through into Canada? Funny, because that's exactly what he's doing. Drop a like in the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. And the comment question for the episode is this. Is Canada falling down the path towards communism? Let me know in the comments and let's get into it. It's pretty safe to say that it hasn't been the best of weeks for the pro-censorship, anti-freedom crowd inside Canada's legacy media. The same type who will gladly take money from the government in exchange for telling us that we live in some sort of socialist utopia, when the truth is the authoritarian reality of Canadian life seems to get worse day after day. The week started when Elon Musk, a well-known target of the CBC and other Canadian legacy media outlets, told advertisers who are boycotting the social media platform over his own tweets what they can do with themselves. If, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Then Elon Musk would turn his focus to Canada, where he reminded everyone in attendance that Canadians don't have a constitutional right to free speech. And, and uh, you know, a lot of these, a lot of things that we take for granted here in the United States that don't even exist in Canada. There's not no constitutional right to freedom of speech in Canada. So, you know, it's not, and, and there's no Miranda rights in Canada. People like think like, you know, you have the right to remain silent. You don't actually in Canada. That is a fact, by the way. Everything in the charter can be overridden, including your section two freedom of expression rights. And after COVID, every Canadian knows that the charter isn't worth the paper it's written on. How did the Toronto Star respond to Elon Musk speaking the truth about what is happening in Canada? Well, they published an op-ed where someone compares Musk's misinformation to the Taliban in Afghanistan. That's right, Musk saying to Canadians that we don't have the right to free speech, which is true by the way, is the same as misinformation spread by the Taliban. His misinformation contradicted all I had come to embrace in my adopted homeland. These weren't just abstract legal concepts. They were the pillars of the life of freedom and dignity I had sought after fleeing Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, I witnessed the erosion of democratic values and constitutional rights, a downfall that turned a country of law into authoritarianism and repression under the Taliban. Coming to Canada was like walking into a different universe. Here, I found a nation that not only recognized but celebrated the very rights that had been stripped away from me. It was disheartening, therefore, to hear Musk's incorrect assertions about Canadian law while listening to the podcast. Now, Weed reacted with a mix of confusion and fear. Is this the place we've come to? His eyes seemed to ask. For a moment, we were back in that world of haziness, where rights were fragile and could be swept away. Then, to add insult to injury for the Canadian legacy media press, Joe Rogan said this about Canada on Thursday. You live in the frozen communist Oh, Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they've done up there, what they did with the trucker rally and what, what Trudeau's doing with guns and 
what they're trying to clamp down on censorship on the internet that guy can eat shit. Mm. like that that place needs 100 percent an overhaul of government like they're they're sliding down that dangerous road of communism that scares the shit out of me incredible Millions of people around the world heard Joe Rogan say that. Probably one of the most powerful broadcasters of our time. He's saying that about Canada, and yet there's radio silence from the Canadian legacy media over those comments. So the world's top podcaster, and probably the world's most powerful broadcaster at the moment, says the country needs a complete overhaul of government, and that Canada is a frozen communist hellhole. And yet it appears that the Canadian legacy media aren't reporting on that at all. And if they do, it's pretty safe to assume that they're going to accuse Joe Rogan of being some sort of far-right conspiracy theorist. After those rather direct comments about Canada by Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson on his show on X interviewed Alex Jones. That interview between Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones on X has over 18 million views. It also prompted Elon Musk to ask the people if they felt that Alex Jones should be reinstated to the social media platform after five years of being banned. And after close to 2 million votes, 70% of respondents said Alex Jones deserved to be back on the platform. And on Sunday, Elon Musk responded to his own poll by writing this, the people have spoken and so it shall be. So just like that, Alex Jones, likely the harshest critic of Justin Trudeau in the United States, is back on X after a five year suspension. Now say what you will about Alex Jones or Tucker Carlson or Joe Rogan or Elon Musk, but one thing they can't be accused of is not standing up for free speech. In a world in which free speech is undoubtedly under attack, these four men have come to represent free speech. You don't have to agree with what they say or how they say it, but they consistently exercise their right to free speech and sometimes they get things wrong, as is the case with Alex Jones but he has a right to get things wrong. And we, as the consumers, have a right to hold him accountable for getting things wrong. Meanwhile, Justin Trudeau represents the opposite. He has become the poster child of online censorship. Bill C-11, the Online Streaming Act, Bill C-18, the Online News Act, and the yet to be reintroduced Online Harms Bill have made international headlines. Online censorship is now becoming part of Canada's brand on the world stage. So I ask you, the audience, Who's more credible in their assessment of what's really going on in Canada? The world's richest man and the world's top podcaster, or the Canadian legacy media whose very existence depends on being bailed out by the federal government? Now, if there is to be a debate on which side is more credible, one thing that's for certain is that there is no debate on who is winning. Because Justin Trudeau, who represents online censorship, the repression of free speech, is undoubtedly losing. And the people that champion free speech, Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, and Alex Jones, I think it's pretty safe to say are most certainly winning. Trudeau has a less than 1% chance of remaining in power after the next election. Meanwhile, since leaving Fox News, Tucker Carlson has absolutely dominated the ratings with his show on X, still at the top of his game. Joe Rogan, once again, is the top podcaster in the world this year. With Elon Musk, what else really needs to be said? And with Alex Jones, well, he's back on X. My True North colleague, Gruba Subramania, testified in front of the U.S. Congress a few weeks ago, talking in front of the weaponization of the Federal Government Committee. In her testimony, she described what is really going on inside Canada, the repression of free speech, the harmful impact that it has on journalism. I'd like all of you to think of me as a time traveler from the not-too-distant future, coming back to the present to offer you a glimpse of what could lie ahead for America. I live in a time in which, in the name of fairness, you can't share the stories you write for my news publication on social media. I live in a time in which, in the name of the common good, you can be kicked out of your bank and online payment system simply for expressing the wrong political views. I live in a time in which, in the name of social justice, you can commit a serious crime but get a more lenient sentence if you happen to be the right skin color. I live in a time in which, in the name of safety, you can be arrested for exercising your right to peaceful protest if you happen to be protesting the wrong thing. Of course, I'm not a real time traveler, I just live in Canada. What is happening in Canada is a gradual suffocation of free expression. It is draped in a cloak of niceness, inclusivity and justice, but it is regressive, authoritarian and illiberal. Rupa's testimony was picked up by the rest of the world's media. It instantly went viral. 
But you see, it was a little too critical of Canada to be picked up by the Canadian legacy media. Like I said, they are in the business of trying to tell Canadians that our country is a perfect utopia, that everybody loves it here, that nobody takes issue with what's really going on. A perfect example of a Canadian journalist telling the truth about how bad things really are inside Canada, and yet Canadian legacy media want nothing to do with it. Like I said at the beginning of the show, that is exactly what would happen in communist countries. And ladies and gentlemen, it is happening in our beloved Canada. That's gonna do it for us today on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.